Hi, this is a video discussing a brief algebra review of exponential and logarithmic functions. First, exponential functions. These are functions of the form y equals b times a to the x. The key component that makes something exponential is that the variable x is an exponent. b has to be greater than 0 and a cannot equal 0. So what defines an exponential function is your variables and the exponent. When the base a is greater than 1, that means we have an increasing exponential function or exponential growth, as it's called. When a is between 0 and 1, well, that means we have exponential decay, which is a purely decreasing function. Now, the log function is of the form y equals log base a of x. It is the inverse of the exponential function. That means if you take the exponential function and you switch the x and y values, they switch places, you'll get the log function. Now, there's an easy way to convert from log to exponential form. So if you have y equals log base a of x, notice that whenever I pronounce my log function, a is called the base. So think about it this way. It's all about the base. A is your base. In exponential form, A will be needing an exponent. So if A is hanging out with X in log form, that means A will be hanging out with the other component, Y, in exponential form. So at the end of the day, you get A to the Y equals, and now X is all by itself. So A to the Y equals X. That's how you convert from log to exponential form. Remember, it's all about the base. Now, just as a little FYI, we cannot take the log of numbers less than or equal to zero. They have to be quantities strictly positive. So let's get some practice. <coughs> Convert the exponential form. So remember what I said, it's all about the base. So start off, circle the base A. A is hanging with four in log form. That means A will be hanging with five in exponential form. So that means you get four equals A to the fifth. Or you could say a to the fifth equals four. Either format is correct or OK. Next, natural log of six equals y. Instead of the log log, this is the natural log. What's so special about the natural log is that it always has a base of e, which is Euler's constant. e is approximately 2.718. So OK, circle your base e. E is hanging with 6 in log form. E hangs out with y in exponential form. So you get 6 equals e to the y. Now, just a little note here that when there is no base indicated, the base value of the log log function is always 10. Remember, that's when there's no base indicated. And it'll always be e for the natural log function. So it'll always be E for ln, natural log. Now we can also convert from exponential form to log form. So remember, it's still all about the base. The base is E in exponential form. That means I will be dealing with log or ln. Anytime you see E, that's ln. The base is E. What's going to go inside the log? Will it be B or will it be 9? Well, if E is hanging with B in exponential form, E will be hanging out with 9 in log form. So natural log of 9 equals B. There's no need to write the E as the base because it's understood that natural log always has a base of E. Therefore, natural log of 9 equals B. Next, in part B, you have the variable A. Base is A. A to the fourth equals 24. <laughs> so this means that log, the base is A, of 24 equals 4. So that is converting from log, from exponential to log form. <clears throat> now let's get a little bit of practice solving some basic log and exponential equations. First things first, to solve a log equation, log equation means that the variable is contained within a log. You will convert the equation to exponential form. So I'll put a little note here that says convert to exponential form. So similar to what we did on the previous slide. So identify your base, it's 3. The quantity 4x minus 7 is contained within your log. 3 is going to go to the other side of the equation. And 
become the base for 2. So the base will be 3, the exponent will be 2. So 4x minus 7, the quantity inside the log is by itself, and then you have equal to 3 squared. <coughs> 4x minus 7 equals 9, and it's your job from this point forward to solve for x. So nothing too fancy here, solving a basic linear equation now, where I add 7 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 4. Finally, I get x equals 4. Now, <clears throat> an exponential equation means that the variable is in the exponent. So 2x minus 1, the variable x is in the exponent. So what we need to do is isolate this exponential piece, this base and this power, by adding 1 to both sides. So we'll get e to the 2x minus 1 equals 6. <clears throat> now one strategy that can be used is take the log of both sides of the, exp of the exponential equation. So natural log of e to the 2x minus 1 equals natural log of 6. <clears throat> now what happens here is when you're taking natural log of e, this is a fact, the natural log of e is equal to 1. So what that means here is natural log of e to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 2x minus 1. It's one of the cool facts of logs. When you're taking the natural log of e, whatever the power is on e becomes what the expression simplifies to. So natural log of e will simply become 2x minus 1 equals natural log of 6. <coughs> Our goal now is to isolate x by adding 1 to both sides of the equation. You cannot combine the 6 and the 1. You cannot combine. You cannot combine the natural log of 6 plus 1. These are separate terms. There's a log term, then there's a plus 1 term. So the last thing you can do is divide both sides by 2. <clears throat> so that means I get x equals natural log of 6 plus 1 divided by 2. This is an exact answer, whereas an approximate answer, if you use your calculator, around the three decimal places would be 1.396. So you have an exact answer versus an approximate answer, and usually they'll tell you which one they want. Sometimes it's both. There are also some cool properties which log functions possess. For instance, property 1 tells me that if I'm taking the log of a product, I can split it up as the sum of two individual logs. The log of a product equals the sum of the logs. <clears throat> we call this property the product property. <clears throat> For example, the log base 3 of 7x equals the log base 3 of 7 plus the log base 3 of x. Multiplication becomes addition among separate logs. Property 2 will be often referred to as the quotient property. It tells you what to do when you have division within a log. Well, it just means that you turn division into subtraction of individual logs. The log of a quotient equals the difference of the logs. So if you have log base 9 of y over 4, it's equal to log base 9 of y minus, so you have division, log base 9 of 4. And lastly, we have property three, perhaps the most interesting property of all. And that's saying if you have a power within a log, so within a log you have a base m to a power r, you can bring that power out front of the log. The log of a power equals the product of the power and the log. So if you have log base four of x cubed, you're allowed to take that power within on the base in the log on the quantity in the log, and you're allowed to bring that power out front. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. <clears throat> so we will now use properties of logs to write the following as a single logarithm. So what this means is that we will take many logs and turn them into one. <clears throat> so some things we can do. When you're condensing, when you're writing as a single log, 
you want to take care of property three, the power property first. <clears throat> so we're kind of using the properties backwards here. I start with multiple logs, I want to get back to one. So the first thing you can do is you can take that four out front of the log and you can put it in the exponent of three. <clears throat> so you have log base a of seven plus log base a of three to the fourth. <clears throat> and if you evaluate three to the fourth, you'll actually get 81. So, okay, I took the number out front of the log, made it the power. <clears throat> now, you have addition of two logs. I want to write this as one log. So what's going to happen to the 7 and 81 when you write them in one log? You multiply them together. <clears throat> so you have log base A, of course, is equal to 567. And that's writing two logs as one. <clears throat> it's a similar story in example 5, except notice now we have two numbers out front of each of our natural logs. So we will move those twos to the powers of the quantities within the logs. So you get natural log of 8 squared minus natural log of x squared. That's by property number 3. Property 3. <clears throat> well, that means you get natural log of 64 minus natural log of x squared. You now have subtraction among two logs. You want to know how does this look when we write 64 and x squared in one log. Well, subtraction is associated with division. Natural log, natural log, 64 over x squared. <clears throat> now let's actually expand some logs. <clears throat> when we expand logs, taking one log and turning it into many. So it's the reverse of what we just did. There means you will do property three last. So first, in example six, you will have to use property two <coughs> to take that division within a log and break it up into two logs. <coughs> so you get log base two of A minus log base two of B squared which means last thing you want to do since we took one log and wrote it as two the very last step would be to use property three and bring down the power we will bring down the power the power of two within our second log bring it out front so that's how you fully take one log and turn it into more than one Lastly, in example 7, you have multiplication between x and e to the x. We want to write this as two logs. <clears throat> so I have natural log of x, multiplication becomes addition, plus natural log of e to the x. Now, we talked about a property previously. So this was property 1 we applied first. We talked about a property previously that said if you have a natural log with the e contained within the log itself, Remember, we already know we have a base of E, but the quantity inside the log is also E. That means the natural log and the E cancel out, leaving you with X, or whatever the exponent is. And that's a final simplified answer. <laughs> now, if you're curious to know a little bit more about the derivatives of the E to the X function, exponential function, and natural log of X, well, the derivative of e to the x is just that. It's e to the x. Of course, there will be a chain rule that we have to worry about shortly, but we won't worry about that right now. And then if you have the natural log function, the derivative is 1 over x, or more accurately, 1 over what is inside the natural log. <clears throat> so just a little bit of practice here to get us warmed up is when you take the derivative of our function f of x here, you have 200x. Well, that's something we're used to seeing. The derivative of 200x is 200. The derivative of 3 to e to the x is 3, you guessed it, e to the x. So that's kind of fun. <clears throat> now part b, 
your function f of x equals 200 minus 3 natural log of x. 200 becomes 0 because it's a constant. Minus 3, what's the derivative of natural log of x? It's 1 over the inside, so 1 over x. So that means you'll get f prime of x equals minus 3 over x. <coughs> of course, it's not always going to be that simple because the chain rule is going to come and haunt us. So in an exponential function, we apply the chain rule to the exponent. For a natural log function, we apply the chain rule to the inside of the natural log. So just to kind of let you see this in perspective, and we'll get more practice with this later, but you see 3e to the 5x squared plus 4x followed by the term minus 2x squared. <clears throat> well, the derivative is still going to be 3e to the whatever the exponent is. That will never change. But the chain rule, the chain rule applied to the exponent, that's my chain rule, take the derivative of 5x squared plus 4x, you'll get 10x plus 4. That's your chain rule. Lastly, you have your minus 2x squared, which is just a term that we're used to differentiating to get minus 4x. This is actually an acceptable form of the final answer. Please note that that 10x plus 4, that resulted from the chain rule, just multiplies with the 3 and the base e. <clears throat> Lastly, in part b, we have f of x equals square root of x. Remember, that's really x to the half power. Plus 3 natural log. Plus 3 natural log of 9x minus 2. We will first take the derivative of x to the half power, or square root of x. We get 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Then you have plus 3. We have to think, what is the derivative of natural log of 9x minus 2? Well, first, it's 1 over what's inside. But then you got to apply the chain rule to that inside. So what's the derivative of 9x minus 2? It's 9. We will write this answer maybe a little bit neater. I'm fine with the 1 half, x to the negative 1 half. But if you want, you can multiply 3 by 9 to get 27 over 9x minus 2. And that's an introduction about the derivative derivatives of the exponential and natural log function. So exponential with base e and natural log. So thanks for watching.